Hello 108 class, Mr. McHugh here with you to kick off section 5.3 polynomial functions. Now remember back in chapter 3.6 we talked about functions and that was the famous f of x which is equivalent to the variable y. Don't forget that, okay? So what we're going to do here, the word polynomial is not, function just means you're going to have a polynomial on the right hand side all set equal to f of x. Okay, now don't forget, it's f of x, it's not multiplication, okay, it's a notational. And so you're going to have a polynomial, it's going to be written in the protocol or format of the exponents going in descending order. There's two, there's one, and a number, and remember, x to the zero, oops, oops, oops sorry, x to the zero could be written there if you needed to. Okay, the coefficients in front of the variables are whole numbers, um, and the expo exponents are in descending order and f of x allows us to say if we now have a specific value for x we could take that value plug it in to each of the locations where x is and eventually evaluate it oops 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 not there sorry evaluate it and come up with the output input process output is what a function is okay polynomial function is a function with a polynomial in one variable consisting of one or more terms okay now um, let's go straight into example one where they say evaluate the polynomial function. Okay, I love doing these problems and I love giving them to students because they are easy. All you're going to do is they're going to give you a polynomial function. How do you know it's a function? It's written as f of x. And how do you know it's a polynomial? It's got a collection of terms on the right hand side. This is a what, how many degrees would this be? You look at the highest exponent, it's a three degree because it's the same, only one variable. Okay, all you're going to do is they are going to tell you, let x be three. You are going to plug it in. What is f of x? Excuse me, f of three equals question mark. That's your problem. Take the value of x, it's three. Plug it in. And wherever you see an x, you plug it in three in for it. So you're going to evaluate f of three. Instead of putting X, you put the 3. Now, my nickname for this from my engineering days was plug, plug and chug. You're going to plug in the value and you're going to chug away, meaning arithmetic, on your calculator. And you're going to come up with the final output. Okay. So what do we got here? 4 times 3 cubed minus 3 squared plus 5. Okay, take your calculator. 3 cubed is what? 27. 27 times 4 minus 9 plus 5 all turns out to be 104. f of 3 has an output of 104. The input was x which was 3. The output that ordered pair would be 3 comma 104. Okay, if you could graph these now. Learning how to graph is one of the skills I learned as an engineer in doing an, an uh, analysis, looking at data, finding trend analysis, okay? And so this ob objective two does not match what you have in the book is from the previous um, version, edition 10. But let's talk about it a little bit because this one kind of maybe will hit home as to your abilities to use and analyze data and the impact that it can have on your lives. Okay, so this example two talks about how many households have been using online bill payment in 05? And so they start off and they tell you the function is written in millions of people, f of x, and it got decimals here. It's got a coefficient of 0.08 x squared plus 2.625 times x plus 0.052. This is all in millions of people. Now the hard part is we don't know who figured out this polynomial. This is a second degree polynomial. This is also called a parabola. Um, but we're going to work with it. It's fairly accurate data. And what would the impact of that be? Now, let's think about this for a second. The first year they did this was year 2000. They're going to let x equals 0. And what I tried to do was put that in there for the first equation. Now, look what happens here. 0 times anything is 0. 0 times 0 is 0. Plus 0.502 is a half a million people were using online bill paying back in 2000 half a million. Okay, doesn't seem like a whole lot of a number. And who would have thought back then? Now you gotta have your memory back here because we're talking 12 years ago, but that was when dot-com bust happened. Internet was just starting to explode. People were using it. 
Um, it's hard to imagine now at this day, day and age, 12 years ago, that it was a big, big thing as to people who would use it. What would you use it for? Okay. Now here you are. Pretend you are um, a bank, and you see that data, and you tell your managers in your bank to maybe you should, maybe you guys should think about guys meaning that bank should think about um, getting into online bill paying. Okay, think about that person. Think about the person who's at the post office, looks at the same data, and says, ah, so what? Half a million people. Now, let's look here. If you're going to write a report up for your boss, you want to show them trend analysis, you do a little bit of uh, grind work here. Look what happens at five years later, 2005. Put X in for five. Look what happens. Five squared. Multiply all these out. Look at the result. 33.83 million. From a half a million to 33 million in five years. That is phenomenal growth. Okay? Look what happened in 2010. Ten years, one decade, the number of people using online bill paying was 107.6 million. That's one third of the population of the United States, roughly. Okay, look at that. Okay. So if you were the person at the bank and you showed that data and said, hey, I think this is something we should get into. What's happened for your bank? You've had lots of success. What happens if you're the post office? You wrote this report up and you told your, your managers, hey, we need to do something about this. We're, we're losing. People are not using the mail service to send their bill payments because what was the bulk of what you used to get in your, in your mail back in the day? Many of you probably would say you used to get your bills would come in and you would pay them out. I don't know. I remember doing this every month, putting stamps on them all, right? Stamps are 48 cents, cent, cents now. What's happening to the post office? This is my point of the story. What's happening to them? Their volume of need has gone down. What's happening with banks? They have gone up. What did they get into? They got into the business of delivering payments. Okay. What happened to, what happened to the bill payment? What happened here? Every company in America now turns around and sends you an e email statement for your bill. How many of you guys even get bills? Some of you do. I know you do. I do too, once or two. But everything's been almost done online. What's happened to the post office? It's in bad shape. Okay. I don't mean to be depressing on this concept, but I'm trying to get you to see how numbers and these polynomial functions could have real impact to people who analyze them and see the trend analysis. Okay. So listen, that's it. I'll jump off my soapbox here. Um, for, for fun, if you look on page, uh, excuse me, 285, look at the education. The number of people, number of people, uh, kids using education K through 12. If you took that polynomial function, they ask you to do it for year 2006. Take a couple samples of that. Start at the year zero, which would be uh, 1990. You put zero in for X. It was 41.26 million people, kids were using it. In 2006, it was 49.3. Do one in the middle. Do P8. And excuse me. Let X equal away. Do that. See the trend analysis. What happens if you're in the education business? Are you getting more? Are you getting less students? What's happened to the population? Population's rising. Is there the number of students rising? Or is there something going on? What, what if you found out it was declining in public education? What would that tell you? Okay. I just these are all food for thought. So I'll get I'll get going here and I will see you for page two and I'll catch you then. Okay, goodbye.